found the interesting and amusing to me things about the knife industry is that there are a great many ideas argued to be fact to the level that it's absurd to even question them but are actually wrong one of them is the idea that you can't use oil and water on the same stone and in corollary with that is that you cannot use oil on certain stones because they are water stones now I put quotations around that because the idea of calling a stone a water stone is itself a sort of laughable thing stones are just stones they're just abrasives it's very common in the industry to use both oil and water together as a mixture or to use oil or to use water on the same abrasive this is a little piece of a king 1000 grit stone I glue these small stones on the little sticks because it makes it easier to sharpen larger knives when you have a knife like this which won't even all fit on the camera this is William Neese's paring knife it's not the most trivial thing in the world to sharpen this by trying to grind it against a bench stone so I usually take smaller stones and this gives me a little bit of handle to keep my fingers away from the edge and I can work it on a knife this stone has an aluminum oxide abrasive and it has a resin bond which is basically a glue that holds the aluminum oxide together this is commonly used in industry with oil as a lubricant it's called a water stone but again there's no mandate that you have to use water on it oil works perfectly fine and in fact it could be argued that oil is a better lubricant because for a number of reasons and that's why in general in industry you'll find oil used and the only reason that they use water is because it has lower cost and it's easier and it has less of an environmental impact now I've been using this with water for the longest time and recently I took it out again to use it on a knife and it had dried out completely and you have to go to soak it and of course it dries out and soaks it dries out and soaks it and it just came to me that if I had been using it with oil that wouldn't happen oil doesn't essentially dry out the same way that water does so I put a little bit of oil on it of course oil started going into the stone rather rapidly because it was dry then what I did was I soaked the stone for a few minutes to mainly fill it up with water and then I floated a little bit of oil on top and gradually now as I've been using it I've been adding a little bit of oil to it so it's slowly getting uh, soaked in with oil which basically keeps the moisture in it which allows me to use it more rapidly so I don't need to re-soak it again I can just spritz it and go on so the benefits of using oil is that it doesn't dry out hundred percent it still generates the same slurry, it still releases abrasive, still does everything that it does with water, it just doesn't dry out. Doesn't explode, doesn't fragment, it acts exactly as it does with water, except it doesn't dry out. Now, do you need to use oil on a Japanese resin bond stone? No, you don't. Water works perfectly fine. The stone naturally breaks down, naturally releases abrasive, water is perfectly fine if however you go to something like this this is a Norton economy stone uses silicon carbide as an abrasive which doesn't make that much difference but the bond is a vitrified bond what that basically means is a fancy word for basically saying a pottery type clay that's used to hold the abrasive together and it's fired in the kiln just like you fire pottery so the bond is much much stronger and it won't release abrasive particles nearly as well as the king will so if you use water on this, it doesn't work nearly as well as oil. Oil is a much better lubricant than water, which means it reduces friction and gets the stone to cut instead of producing friction. Now you don't need to worry about that on a Japanese resin bond stone, because again, friction is not going to be that much of a concern, because the abrasive is being released anyway, and it forms that slurry and that kind of paste. So water works perfectly fine. You can use oil. It does stop the stone from drying out, but water is not that bad but if you try to use water on this yes it will work yes it will flow particles off 
but your rate of wear of the abrasive will be rather high compared to how much material you remove because you'll be wasting a lot in terms of friction and friction increases wear on the abrasive and decreases wear on what you're actually trying to cut. Now, can you actually mix them back and forth? Of course you can. So I normally use this with, with oil. If I spray water on it, it will just bead on the surface. But using water on it is much better than using it dry. It will eventually just dry out. No problem. And the next time I use it, I can put oil on it. The next time I use it, I can put water on it. And if I want, I can also run a bit of this. This is Greenworks, which is a product very simple to um, Simple Green. That works a bit better on water, but not as good as oil. Now, if you want to get really fancy, you can actually take your water and your oil together. You can use an emulsifier, which allows to blend. This is a natural one. They're gums. They're uh, becoming kind of in vogue now because everybody's going gluten-free. And this allows material to bind together, similar to gluten, but it's not a gluten. This is a fiber, not a protein, so it won't cause any adverse reactions. The only thing you have to be careful of this is that this has such a propensity to bond with water, you have to be careful about how you add it to things, because it will form these thick gloops. So, anyway, interesting material to work with. But that's a natural emulsifier. So if you mix that in with water, and you can mix it in with oil, it will allow the water and the oil to actually blend together, and you can make yourself a dilute sort of... Um, lubricant to use with stones that has properties of both. Uh, the only thing is, this again is a natural material, it is a fiber, so that means living things can eat it rather quickly. So this can actually get moldy and stuff if you use it as a lubricant. So if you're going to do that, you need to add something to it to sort of keep the bacteria and mold away from it. So it's not something I sort of uh, experiment with myself, but if you actually want to see a natural emulsifier, that will actually do it. So the main point I wanted to make on this video is that, in reality, there's no such thing as a hard distinction between water stones and oil stones. All stones can essentially be used with water, and all stones can essentially be used with oil. The main difference is that if you get a stone like this, which has an extremely strong binder that doesn't tend to release fresh abrasive, then you're going to tend to want to use oil, because oil is much better at reducing friction, and it keeps the wear on the abrasive down. If you have a stone like this, which is a resin bond, which is a much weaker bond, which naturally releases abrasive, then you don't really need to use oil. Water works perfectly fine. The stone generates a slurry. The slurry stops the stone from loading. There's no issues in built up of friction on the abrasive, because the abrasive is coming off anyway. I do use oil on a number of these, because I found it's very helpful. It doesn't dry out like water, and it lets me use them essentially to splash and go. Once this actually gets impregnated with oil, then I can just spritz it with water, and it works essentially as a splash and go water stone. It's kind of an interesting little thing to do. And when you have stones like these, these are this is a natural Japanese water stone. But if you pick up an Arkansas stone, people wouldn't flip out if you used oil on it. So why do you use oil on a, an Arkansas stone and you use water on a Japanese stone? It's just a cultural thing. There's no reason why you can't use water on an Arkansas stone or oil on a Japanese natural stone. Again, the abrasives don't explode if you use them. You just gotta think about the different properties of oil and water and which one you actually want on a stone. Now, uh, the only thing that I will say in regard to stuff like this, again, this is Greenworks, which is similar to Simple Green. Uh, that's a detergent, and it has a number of other chemicals in it to act as cleaners. Some people use glass cleaners as well, particularly on diamond plates. I haven't done a lot of experimentation with some of the fancier water stones. They use uh, magnesium-based bonds and a number of other different bonds, and often they don't really tell you what they're doing. So it could be possible that some of the things in the detergents could weaken the bonds. And the other thing is some of these stones are rather expensive. So while I have some of them, uh, I do like to use them like uh, Nanawa Superstone 400 and I got a Chosera 400 grit stone. I'm not so inclined at this stage to spray them down with a bunch of detergents and see what happens because if it does affect the bond strength, it could make the stone release abrasive way too fast and that would, you know, damage the stone. So with the expensive Japanese stones, have a bit of uh, concern because you could actually weaken the bonds. But that's only with 
detergents, oil is extremely inert. I can't think on any way that oil would affect the bond uh, of a stone. But um, as we'll all do a little bit of experiments. And the nice thing about smaller stones like this, uh, when you get them, and oftentimes um, you can find uh, suppliers of stones sell like little miscellaneous packets where you get little bits of stones like this and here's a little tiny piece of a Japanese natural and you can often pick these up for like 20 or 30 bucks and you get like 15 to 20 little pieces of stones it's a nice rather inexpensive way for you to play around with abrasives and then see which ones actually have the properties uh, that you like this for example natural uh, Japanese stone is extremely hard doesn't tend to produce a slurry at all and produces a very fine polish so when I have a knife like this What I do is I use the king to work the edge bevel. The king produces a very fine slurry, and that's letting me take the edge bevel down, form an apex, but the slurry on the king stone prevents the apex from forming a burr, prevents the apex from being damaged, because while it's planing down the sides of the edge, it's also planing down into the apex and keeping all that damage away. So once I get the edge relatively to that sort of plateau stage that I've been aiming for lately, then I take the natural stone, which is very hard, which doesn't form a slurry, and I use that to put on the final apex micro bevel in a few passes. So once you know what the different stones do, how they behave, and you think about the different stages of sharpening and what you're trying to achieve, you just use each stone to do each stage so you get the maximum benefit out of each stone. That's one of the things, if anything, that you would take away from uh, some of these videos is that stones, like knives, have things that they excel at and things that they're relatively poor at. And if you use a stone where it excels, the stone is great. If you use a stone where it behaves poorly, the stone is crappy. But again, it's not really the stone as much as you're using it for something that is extremely unsuitable to do. If you use this to peel potatoes, it doesn't work very well. It's really heavy, it's hard to control, it's not a great potato peeler. That doesn't mean it's not a good knife. That's a rather silly comparison, but that's the point that I'm trying to make. If you use this stone, which has a very weak bond, which forms a very heavy mud, and you try to set the very apex, it'll be very frustrating. Because just as you're grinding into the sides of the apex, you're also plowing down into the top of it, and that will make it very hard to achieve a fine sharpness. But if you use it to prepare the edge for the apex, all of a sudden it's wonderful. It planes down the edge bevel, it grinds down the apex, it keeps the burr away, it keeps any damage away, and then you switch to a hard stone, bam, put that apex on, and it becomes very easy. So use the stone for their strengths. And again, non-junk knife. Actually a pretty decent knife. A bit too small for my hands. <laughs>